So today, I'm going to cut the rest of the parts I need for the brick layered or brick style utensil holder. Um, I need to cut two strips of wood off of this at 7 8 wide to use to cut the segments to go between the bricks on each one of the rings. The brown bricks or the black walnut bricks are cut a little bit shorter than the maple bricks so that I could add a quarter inch slice in between them and that would give me my brick pattern. So we're going to start working on that right now. All right, I'm going to turn the saw on. I'm going to start cutting these. But first, I got to get my hearing protection. So just to let you know what I'm doing now, when I was just cutting there, was all the pieces to go between the bricks in the ring to make the brick pattern. So each one of these little blocks has to be cut up the end of a piece of wood because you need side grain because the existing stuff put together is end grain and I need end grain to end grain to keep the pattern looking the same otherwise I have a uh, the uh, brick patterns on the side will look uh, strange because it won't be side grain, it'll be in grain. 
So I had to go and cut, I have to cut 216 of these. Right now I'm gonna count these and see how many more I need to cut, because I think, if I'm correct, I need to cut about another 25, I'm not sure. I calculated it out, cut the board to the right length, and we'll see, but I'm not gonna count it on camera, so I'll do that and come back to you. So at this point in the video, I failed to explain what I was doing. I'm taking a piece of blue tape, face up, and I'm sticking the segments and the spots in between with the little white maple parts to the tape using the straight edge to keep them all in line. Once I get that done, I will put glue in between each one of them, use a paintbrush to push the glue down to the bottom to make sure it's got full coverage. Then I will take the tape and roll it up into a circle. After I roll it up into a circle, I get radiator clamps that I have put together. I got two of them, the two big ones that are put together. And I put that around the circle and I use an impact to tighten that down to keep the uh, gaps closed. And then I go and I put it over onto a table that I have set around the corner there so that I don't get it sticking to anything. I put it on this plastic table. It's kind of like glue resistant. This is where I'm using the brush, and I realize that this doesn't work so well because the brush gets all mushed up. So in the next one, I will be using something else. I'm trying different methods on each one because I've never done rings like this and never done one, this big of rings with that many segments. Each one of these rings right here is 48 pieces because there's 24 segments and 24 in-betweens. So that's what I'm doing at this point in time. And I have to do this nine times because I'm making nine rings. So I got two of these glued up. I bring them clamped down for a while. I can undo them. Got to find the start of the tape. looks good. Too bad I can't reuse the tape each time. I already took the clamp off this one. inside the joint it looks like. Very little. Not enough to hurt anything. Well that's two down. I got what?
And that's how you do it. Let's get this wiped off. So at this point on the brick pattern utensil holder, I have gotten all of the brick pattern rings created. Now I have to create the ones that go between here that I will have to shave down to size to be the same width as these, the smaller ones. I'll show you a picture. That's a quarter inch. Let me get these ones broken apart. These aren't totally dry yet, but they've been in the clamp for a while. So I can take them apart and hang them up to finish drying. They don't dry as well when they have tape on them and stuff because the air can't get in there. There's one. All right, so now I'm going to aim the camera down at where I'm working here and I'm going to do the maple rings. I'm going to do a couple of them. I got four to do. Let me get this aimed. take this uh, glue paddle made by Rockler and I have to clean off the glue from the last ones I did. Now I just have to push the glue around so that it's evenly distributed on the blocks. Mainly, I'm just pushing it down towards the tape. Then we take a little bit. On the end here. Just wipe it on there to get the one on the very end. Then I come over here. And I cut the tape that's holding it down off flush with this block. I peel this tape off. Get my fingers unstuck. And we just start rolling it up.
once I get it rolled up into a pretty much a circle, I have to press it down and then tape it across. Then I lay it down on the back side because that was the flat side. Pardon me, I gotta get my paper towel. Let me get one of these clamps. Put it around, get the wrench, or in this case an impact. Getting blue all over everything. Then I make sure it's all flat. And it is, and I tighten it down. And then I have to wipe off the one side as soon as I get the drill out of the way. <clears throat> and the water bottle. Wipe up my mess. Everything's fairly flat. Then I lay it down one more time, wipe off the other side just to get the bulk of it off. Because it's going to go through a drum sander, so it doesn't really matter. And we throw that away because it's not good anymore. And I need to do that four more times, so I'm not going to bother you with uh, showing you all four of them. I did like I did like seven of the eight or nine, I think it's nine brick pattern ones. I have to make four of these which will get split in half on the lathe once I glue them to the base block. That ought to be fun. I've never done that before. I'm going to use the parting tool to create the quarter inch rings to go between the brick pattern and the, and the base and from in between each brick pattern to make that quarter inch space to go between for the brick pattern for the mortar. So it's been a couple hours, eh, a little over an hour, and I've got three of the maple rings glued up. I thought I would take one apart and show it to you. And get it to come apart and untape it. If I can find the end of the tape, there it is. And there's one ring complete. I got one more I need to make, that's why I have to take them apart now because. I So at this point, I have gotten all the rings made for the brick pattern crap catcher. I'll show them to you. Here are the brick pattern ones, all nine of them. And the four cross member mortar bed for between each ring. I need to sand them down flat so that they will fit together smoothly and flat and I'm going to do that on the drum center. Let me get this thing positioned, get it turned on, sized, and get the dust collection on.
And that is how you flatten the rings so that you can start making the stacks. Now I have to make a base to glue them to with a pocket in the back so that I can put it on the lathe and line these up with the other chucks, the two chucks on my lathe, so I can get it as close to centered as possible on the base. Um, anyway, uh, that'll be a different video because I haven't got the base made yet. So that'll be the next thing I do is make glue up the base, get it flattened on here, and then get it on the CNC to cut the pocket in the back for the for the uh, chuck. Talk to you later.